this question we're given two functions f and function g and function f here is a quadratic and function g is a straight line just quickly before we go on to the question let's just think about this it tells us the domain of the quadratic is x can be any number so we've got the whole quadratic and it tells us for the straight line that x can also be any number so we've got the whole of the straight line now for part a we work, we're asked to work out the range of f i.e. This is all the y values it can take, all possible y values. Now, it's really helpful when doing this type of question about a range to draw the graph. So we're going to draw the quadratic. Now, in particular, I'm going to give it a name y just for now. y is equal to x squared subtract 3x add 7. Whenever dealing with questions about a range with a quadratic, Draw the graph for sure, but use completed the square to draw the graph. It's the best way to find the minimum or maximum point. So what we're going to do is we're going to have y is therefore equal to x subtract 3 over 2, all squared. Square the negative 3 over 2 in your head and subtract it off. So subtract 9 over 4 and add back on the 7. That was already here. So we get ourselves that y is equal to x subtract 3 over 2, all squared, and then we get add 19 over 4, like that. Now, the beauty of this, uh, putting it in completed square form, is that these two numbers tell us something about the vertex, or the minimum or maximum of the graph. And it tells us um, that the graph, so we can actually sketch the graph, and I'm going to sketch it over here. I know for sure that it's got its minimum at positive 3 over 2, and positive 19 over 4. So positive 3 over 2, positive 19 over 4, somewhere here, 3 over 2, 19 over 4. That's where its minimum is. I know it's going to cross the axis at 7, so up here somewhere. So I know the graph looks something uh, like that. If that was 7, imagine. So that really helps us work out the range, because the range are all possible y values. So you can see the range here, the y numbers can take any value from infinity down to 19 over 4 and back up to infinity. So therefore, the range f of x is bigger than or equal to 19 over 4. And we're done. Okay, the next part, part b, nice easy part, it asks us to work out g of f of negative 1. Now, let's start off by getting a mark by working out f of negative 1, which is when you put negative 1 into this quadratic up here. So it's when you work out negative 1 squared subtract 3 multiplied by negative 1 add 7. Just word of warning, make sure, absolutely sure, that you substitute with brackets in here, otherwise you'll make a mistake on the calculator. Now actually I'm going to get the calculator out, I'm actually going to get the calculator to do the dirty work for me, and what it's going to do, I'm going to type in the function, which is x squared subtract 3x add 7, I'm going to tell it to calculate when x is negative 1. And I get the answer 11. So I know the answer to this is 11. So therefore, g of f of negative 1 is actually the same thing as g of 11. So all I need to do is go away and work out g of 11, and i.e. substitute 11 up here. So 2 multiplied by 11 take away 1. So 2 brackets 11 take away 1, which is 22 take away 1 which is obviously 21. So g uh, of f of negative 1 is equal to 21. We're asked to solve the equation f of g of x is equal to 17. So for part c, we're solving f of g of x is equal to 17. So we're going to put the function for g of x into the function for f and make it equal 17 and solve the resulting equation. So we're going to put 2x subtract 1 into our equation. So remember our functions are f of x was equal to x squared, what was it, subtract 3x, add 7, and our g of x was equal to 2x subtract 1. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this 2x subtract 1 in in place of x in here and then make it equal to uh, 17. So let's do that. So we're going to have 2x subtract 1 all squared, take away 3 multiplied by 2x subtract 1, add 7 is equal to 17. And we're going to expand this and we're going to solve the equation. So expanding this, I get myself 4x squared, subtract 4x, add 1, 
take away this times this would be 6x, and this multiplied by this would be add 3. Add 7 is equal to 17. Collecting like terms, so we've got a 4x squared here, and we've got negative uh, 4x here. We've got negative 6x here, and we're going to collect numbers. We've got a 1, a 3, and a positive 7. So I'm going to collect all that, and I have myself 4x squared, subtract 10x, add 11, equals 17. Subtract the 17 of both sides, 4x squared, subtract 10x, and we're going to have subtract 6 is equal to 0. Uh, it would be helpful to divide everything by 2 here, because 2 is a factor of everything. So we have 2x squared, subtract 5x, subtract 3 is equal to 0. Hopefully we can factorise this, so 2x, x here, so multiplying to negative 3 and then combining to a next term of negative 5, so it's going to be negative 3, add 1, and we get ourselves that x is either equal to 3 or x is equal to negative a half. And there are two solutions to the question. Double check here, yeah, x is allowed to be anything, so I accept both solutions and we're done.